What is up everybody? I know you're hoping that I'll teach you another new model and your wish is my command. So let's get after it party people. Make sure to smash that like button and subscribe while the music plays. All right, so this lesson is all about the Phillips curve, but I have good news. While this exact model is new to you, in a lot of ways, this is just a review video with a twist. It's basically the ADAS model dressed up in a new outfit. So let's start off with both of them up on the screen. Okay, on the left, we have the ADAS model with the price level and real GDP on the axes. On the right is the Phillips curve model with the inflation rate on the vertical axis and the unemployment rate on the horizontal axis. As we move up higher on both models, we're seeing more inflation and a higher price level. The horizontal axes are real GDP and unemployment. And we should remember from unit two that real GDP and unemployment are inversely related. So on the ADAS model, as we move further to the right, real GDP increases and unemployment falls. And the same thing happens on the Phillips curve as we move further to the left. In a lot of ways, these two models are basically mirror images of each other. Okay, so the short run Phillips curve shows that there is a trade-off between inflation and unemployment in the short run. The downward sloping SRPC curve shows this clearly. If we move from point A to point B, we can see that the inflation rate decreases, but the unemployment rate rises. But what about the long run? The long run Phillips curve is vertical, showing that there is not a trade-off between inflation and unemployment in the long run. This important insight by Milton Friedman, among other economists, calls into question the usefulness of policies that focus on short-run effects because these same policies are ineffective in the long run. But before we get into that, let's start with the placement of the LRPC. The LRPC is vertical at the natural rate of unemployment. This means that there's no cyclical unemployment, which also means that our economy is in long-run equilibrium. So when the economy is on the LRPC, it's the same as it being on the LRAS on the ADAS model. Lots of acronyms, but stick with me. This also means that when we're anywhere to the left of the LRPC, that the economy is in an inflationary gap, while to the right of the LRPC, it's in a recessionary gap. Again, basically the mirror image of the ADAS model. The next thing that's really important to understand is that at the intersection of the SRPC and the LRPC, the actual inflation rate is equal to the expected inflation rate. We have three points in this model, A, B, and C. At point B, the inflation rate is 4%, and since we're intersecting with the LRPC, we know that 4% is also the expected inflation rate. At point A, the inflation rate is 6%, which is above the expected rate, and at point C, the inflation rate is only 2%, which is obviously below it. But even if we took the numbers away, as long as we know that the intersection of the SRPC and LRPC gives us the expected inflation rate, we would know that anywhere to the left of the LRPC, actual inflation is greater than expected, and that anywhere to the right of the LRPC, actual inflation is less than expected. This is extremely important when we go from the short run to the long run. Okay, now that we have some of the fundamental stuff down, we need to explore what causes movements and shifts of the SRPC, as well as how we go from the short run to the long run on this model. Recall that there is a short run trade-off between inflation and unemployment. This suggests that if policymakers want to reduce unemployment, they can do so at the cost of accepting a higher inflation rate. Again, this is actually not a new concept. Consider the ADAS model. If policymakers implement expansionary policy to shift AD to the right, the short run outcome is a higher price level, meaning inflation, as well as higher real GDP, and in turn, lower unemployment. That same expansionary policy will cause an upward movement along the SRPC. Both of these models are telling us the exact same thing, and this is one of the beautiful things about this model. A shift of the AD curve is the same as a movement along the SRPC. More specifically, AD shifting right is the same as an upward movement along the SRPC, and AD shifting left is the same as a downward movement along the SRPC. So if you know your determinants of AD, then you'll have no problem with the Phillips curve model. Most often with this model, we'll focus on expansionary and contractionary policies, but you get the idea. But as mentioned already, these policies that are successful trading off higher inflation for lower unemployment don't work in the long run. Again, this isn't actually new. Look back at our ADAS model for proof. Here, the expansionary policy lowers unemployment and raises the price level in the short run. 
but we know that the economy self-corrects when nominal wages that were sticky in the short run become flexible in the long run and increase, shifting the SRAS left. And this shows that the only long-run effect of expansionary policies is a higher price level. What about the Phillips curve? Well, I'm going to tell the story slightly differently, but we're going to end up in the same place. On the Phillips curve, it's the same principle, but we focus on inflationary expectations. So we start at point A, and then an expansionary policy is implemented, moving us up to point B, lowering the unemployment rate at the cost of higher inflation. And this works for a little while. But eventually, people will realize that actual inflation is higher than what they expected. And when this happens, workers demand higher wages to match the price increases that they're seeing. This causes those wages that had been sticky in the short run to become flexible and to increase. When the expected inflation rate increases, the SRPC shifts to the right. We arrive at point C, and we have the long-run outcome of the expansionary policy, just higher inflation. Unemployment is back at the natural rate, but now in order to maintain that unemployment rate, it requires more inflation than it did before. And because actual inflation is equal to expected inflation, if policymakers take no further action, the inflation rate will stay right here. This is known as the non-accelerating inflation rate of unemployment, or the NERU. It's an obnoxious acronym, but it's a useful way to point out that attempts to keep the unemployment rate below the natural rate will only lead to accelerating levels of inflation. Basically, imagine that policymakers aren't happy about being at point C, so they implement a new round of expansionary policy. That would cause another upward movement along the SRPC, lowering unemployment back below the natural rate once again. But remember, the only reason this is working is because actual inflation is higher than people's expected inflation. Once people's inflationary expectations adjust, the policy stops working, and the SRPC shifts back to the right again. And people's expectations will adjust faster this time since they've already seen this movie before. As the government keeps doing this, people will eventually come to expect the inflation, so workers demand raises and firms raise their prices before the policy has even been introduced, completely eliminating the effectiveness of expansionary policies. At this point, the only result of expansionary policy is increasing inflation at a faster and faster rate. Just to recap, Movements along the SRPC are the same as shifts of the AD curve and share the same determinants. You may need to pause the video if you want to copy these, but here are the factors that cause an upward movement along the SRPC. The same exact things that shift the AD curve to the right. And downward movements along the SRPC are the same as AD curve shifts to the left that are caused by contractionary policy, both fiscal and monetary, as well as anything that decreases consumer, investment, or government spending, or decreases net exports. Okay, so the shifts of the SRPC are caused by the same things that shift the SRAS curve. The tricky thing is that they shift in opposite directions. So the SRPC shifting right is the same as the SRAS shifting left, and the SRPC shifting left is the same as the SRAS shifting right. And as you copy the shifters, I just want you to think about why it makes sense that these curves move in opposite directions. When the SRAS shifts left, it indicates the worst of all outcomes, right? higher prices, and falling output. Well, that's exactly what the SRPC shifting right indicates as well. It means that it takes higher inflation to maintain every unemployment rate. By the way, hopefully this has been clear, but there is not a causal relationship between these two models. One does not cause the other. They are both caused by the same things and are merely two different ways of expressing what has happened. The only thing left is what would cause the LRPC to shift. First thing is that you won't have to draw that. At least I've never seen College Board ask you to do that yet. Second thing is that we actually already learned this too. The only reason the LRPC will shift is if the natural rate of unemployment changes. It does not change as a result of business cycle fluctuations. It may change due to things like an aging population or changes in policies like minimum wages or unemployment benefits. Make sure you get your labeling and your acronyms down, but you're gonna do great on this model until next time, this has been a La Money production. Thanks again for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, and to ring that bell. And check out the description for a link to the answers to the practice questions, as well as the unit notes and a great review book I've written for you. And I will see you in the next video.